tonight for dinner, since the temp has dropped, and I mean it dropped on us, it's like 70 degrees out. Um, we had really torrential downpours today, and our temperature didn't get as hot as it was supposed to. It's supposed to be in the 90s. So we've got baby Bella's. We're going to do Salisbury steak, mashed potatoes, and green beans. It just sounds good. So, I, like I said, I've got the baby Bellas. I've got pepper, onion powder, Worcestershire, my flour container, beef broth, panko seasoned breadcrumbs, ground beef, the rest of the garlic before I run out, an egg, tomato, ketchup. I don't know why I was going to say tomato ketchup. Olive oil or avocado oil, salt, oregano, and some butter. And it's in my butter bell. And we're just going to make up real simple Salisbury steak. I've got instant mashed potatoes and cans of green beans. Real quick, easy dinner. So in here to start, I'm going to start with the egg. I'm going to do the wet and then add the meat and then add the panko. That way I can get the egg all incorporated. Just give it a little bit of a whisk. Nothing too difficult about that. Do two teaspoons of ketchup. One, two. I did forget this. You do need Dijon mustard. It is one teaspoon of Dijon. Yeah, I like mustard. We're going to put a little bit of salt into this. teaspoon of oregano. No, well, I'm going to eyeball it. There we go. We're just going to whisk this together just to give it a head start. This just for some reason sounded good. We're going to add in the pound of ground beef. And I'm going to break it up just a little bit as we put it in. Kind of like meatloaf, you don't want to over mix. And the final thing is a fourth of a cup of panko breadcrumbs. And I am measuring because I don't like a lot of fillers in my meatloaf or in the Salisbury steak, so I like to be very careful with it. And then I'm just going give this all a mix. So now that I've got it all mixed, basically I'm going to divide this into four. I'm just going to use my fingers and we'll play around with it. And we'll see. I'm going to make balls first. I can already tell you that one's huge. That's smaller. This is how this always works. This one's huge too. Put this over here now. Get that out of your way. This is kind of a, they don't have to be exact. I'm just, I just knew that one was huge. So make them any shape you want. I grew up that they look like this, so I still make them this way. And that's all there is to this. And then we'll get a pan heated because we're gonna cook these down and then we will make the gravy.
The only thing I have to prep for the gravy is I have to clean the mushrooms and dice them. Or dice them. Slice them. This was not one of my boy's favorites, I will be honest. Um, we always like the mushroom gravy. I have one, one that eats mushrooms. <laughs> so needless to say, we didn't have it very often. But I like it, just something different. Okay, I've got the pan heated with oil. I've got the green beans on. I'm just going to take these and get them in here and get them partially cooked. I mean, I want them about medium rare because then you're going to put them back in the gravy and it can finish cooking. That's all we're going to do. We'll flip them when they're ready. And that's what I'm going for. I want these to have a nice crisp crust. And then I'm flattening them a little bit. I have a Salisbury steak we also put in the crock pot. And it's really pretty good too. And you just put um, really lean ground beef patties in raw. And they cook great for when you really need something in the crock pot. But we're gonna let these cook down a little bit more on this side so I've got a nice crisp crust on that side. So I went ahead and pulled the burgers out, but I'm going to deviate just a bit. I've got the drippings, which I should put in the gravy, but we're going to melt some butter and we're going to cook the mushrooms a little bit. I know I'm a little extra, but I like the mushrooms sauteed that go into the mushroom gravy. So we'll do that. It's just one little extra step. Enough. Takes an extra couple minutes. That's all I really want to do now. I'm going to go ahead and take them out so that I can make my gravy. And I'm going to add just a little bit more butter to the pan. So I've got the flour almost completely melted. And I have this over a medium low. We're going to add the flour. Two tablespoons butter, two tablespoons flour. I'm just going to let this cook for a few seconds, just trying to get the flour taste cooked out a little bit. You don't want any lumps. Give it a good whisk. Now I have one and a half cups of beef stock. And we're just going to slowly add. And I forgot, I also added two teaspoons of Worcestershire to the beef stock. This is where my pan cooks. There it goes. If you do it slow enough, it won't form. You'll be able to stir it all in. There we go. Plus, my beef stock is cold. My green beans are over here boiling, and the water for the mashed potatoes are going. I don't have any pre-made mashed potatoes in my freezer that I can find. So I just went with a packet to make life a little bit easier. We're just gonna let this come up to a simmer and we'll add the rest of the ingredients. Now that we've got it starting to 
bubble a little bit. We're going to add in one tablespoon of ketchup. Light on the salt. Ugh, I can never get this open. Fresh ground pepper or pepper. And onion powder. Give it another whisk. It's starting to thicken. And at this point, we're going to start adding everything back in. I got to figure out what I'm going to use to put it all back in. There we go. juice that was on there from the meat. And we're going to put the mushrooms back in. And we're just going to let this finish and thicken the rest of the way up and finish cooking those steaks or the Salisbury steaks. Green beans are going to town over here so dinner should be ready in just a little bit. There you go, in less than 30 minutes, I've got dinner done. We've got the mashed potatoes and the green beans. So I'm gonna call this a stromboli. Don't shoot me. To me, this is not a stromboli. A stromboli is um, hoagie bun, with, or you could do it with a pizza crust, but it's, it's sausage and pepperoni and veggies and cheese. Well, they call this a stromboli. I'm going with it. I like this. I am call this more like an Italian stromboli or something, but I've got the pizza crust, the mozzarella cheese I'm going to shred, ham, pepperoni, salami, and then we're going to make a butter garlic mixture with some Parmesan and Italian seasoning. Brush it on. Throw this in the oven. This is going to make a quick, easy dinner. And there should be some leftovers. So you can use any type of pizza crust. You can even make it. This was just quick and easy tonight. These things always pop. Aldi's also sells just pizza dough. I thought about getting that, but I was too worried. We always put the order in at Myers the night before, and I was worried that with my luck, I'd go to uh, Aldi and they wouldn't have any. So, I just made my life simple. So, put your parchment paper down. And you want to stretch this out. So, for one, you want it to be thinner. Otherwise, this thing does not like to cook well. So, make a nice rectangle. Try to get the dough as even and as thin as you can. So we're gonna start with the ham. As I've warned my husband, he needs to eat some ham sandwiches this week. He's not a huge fan of ham, but they gave me a pound of it. So we're going to use it. You want to go this way. 
and the reason is is you want to roll it that way it's towards the, the long ends and the short part the reasoning is is otherwise if you go this way you're gonna have so many layers of dough it's not gonna all cook now I have done these with just ham and cheese taco meat I've done this with a lot of different things I've used crescent rolls too so I mean you can do this with whatever a little bit more ham <laughs> not my favorite either they shredded it I'm that weird one that goes in the store and I always say I don't want it to look like I want it thin but I don't want it to look like sawdust they gave me sawdust Then I've got the salami. You can put this in in any order. You can use whatever kind of meats you want. This is just kind of what we like. Go a little farther up. One more. Now I'm going to have to find ways to use all this stuff up. Or I just might freeze. Like the pepperoni, I might just freeze. That's not a big deal. And then we've got pepperoni for when we've got a frozen pizza and it doesn't look like it has enough. That I never mind having. Or I could freeze all of it. But as I keep saying, I'm trying to get stuff out of my freezer, not into it. And I've shredded the cheese. So we're just gonna put a generous amount of cheese. The dog and the cat both got cheese. And then a certain dog tried to steal the cheese from the cat. He's lucky he uh, has eyeballs right now. My cat is not nice when it comes to cheese. All right, and you see how I've left a little bit of an edge over here? This is so that when you go to seal it, you've got some. Same with over on this side. And now all I'm gonna do, and you can use the parchment paper to help you, is we're gonna start rolling this. Ugh. Not always the easiest. And I crimp as I go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start closing the ends so that way all the toppings don't come spilling out. And this is the nice thing about using parchment paper. I literally use the paper to help me do this. There we go. Now, as I said, make sure you crimp these ends and you really want to make sure you get a good seal on this. Otherwise, this thing will pop open. Try to make it look as pretty as I can. Okay, now for step two, I've got the butter and I melted it. Let me get a fork. Yeah, I should have got the garlic out first. I didn't. Now you can do garlic powder, you can do garlic, I like garlic, 
You could do Italian seasoning. You could just do parsley, oregano. I'm doing Italian seasoning. It's what we like. And the final is Parmesan. Now I have my oven preheated to 400. Follow the, check your pizza dough, whatever the cooking instruction is, just follow that for temperature. And I'm going to put it in for probably 10 to 12 minutes to start, and then I'm going to just check on it. Because the last thing I want to do is burn this. All right, one more step, and I bet I don't have, I don't. I don't know where my serrated knife is. This will work. You're gonna cut vents. And it makes it look pretty. And then you're gonna take this. And it's nice and thick now. And I'm just gonna paint it all on. one of these. I've got to go out and mow. So my husband was kind enough to mow the side and the back. I have to mow the front. So while I'm doing that, this is going in the oven. Now that we don't have kids here, it's kind of like, oh, he looks at me and goes, I'll do part of it. You want to do part of it? So that's how we kind of do it now. It works. All right, show you what it looks like when it's done. There we go, it's all done. Tonight I'm gonna do a Mugu Gai Pan. Um, just something really easy. The only thing I'm gonna change in the recipe is, is I couldn't get snow peas when I went to the grocery store, so I'm throwing in a zucchini. But I've got brown sugar, soy, sesame oil, cornstarch, I'll need water, uh, green onions to garnish. I've got three large carrots I defrosted. Score, I got something out of my freezer. So there's four chicken thighs in here. You could also use breast. Um, the leftover mushrooms that I have left, as I said, the zucchini, uh, chicken broth, avocado oil, salt, pepper, garlic, and hoisin. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything chopped, and I will show you the marinade we're going to pour over at the end and how I put it all together. So I went ahead, and the zucchini and the mushrooms I've sliced, I cut the onion, or the carrots, and then I went ahead and did the green onions. Then I've got the chicken thighs all cut up, salted and peppered, my pan with oil, and we're just gonna dump. We're gonna get this cooked. And while this is starting to sear and cook, we're going to make the, the sauce that goes on top. My brains are not working tonight, obviously. So the chicken is cooking. In this bowl, we're gonna make the sauce and I'm gonna double it from what you're gonna see in the recipe. But that was a half cup of chicken broth. We're going to do Had to Rescue a Cat. We're going to do 
four tablespoons of soy. I will say we usually like it with a little bit extra sauce. So I just decided to double this. I need brown sugar, so I am going to just wipe it out. Do two tablespoons packed brown sugar. for two cloves so I'm doing four and you know I'm just gonna probably kill us with garlic only do that if you like garlic oh and I didn't open this and I don't know if I'm capable of opening this this may be a let's find oh I got it well I got this part of it ah that was easy that never happens. So we're going to do two tablespoons spoons poison. There's one. This always reminds me of like dark molasses. Not a sticky, thank God. Try to get some of that onto there. Okay. And sesame. One teaspoon. So we're just going to go zoop, zoop. Heavier on the first one. And we're going to give this a whisk. And that's going to be our sauce. The only other thing we're going to do is I've got a mason jar with a little over a chicken down starting to pop. With about a tablespoon of water, we're going to do two teaspoons of cornstarch, and this is what's going to thicken it. Eh, I didn't do it in the greatest thing, I guess. worked. So we're just going to pour this in and give it a whisk. And I'm going to pull the chicken off and I'm going to start with the carrots. So we've got the carrots cooking now and they just need a couple of minutes. You just want them to get a little bit soft. Because you still want a little bit, you don't want a fully cooked carrot, how's that? And then the next thing I'm going to drop in here, I'm going to kind of put the carrots to the side like this. Like you would in a wok. And we're going to add in the zucchini and the mushrooms. And we're going to cook this, and this shouldn't take more than a couple more minutes. And then we'll add the chicken, and we'll add the sauce back in. I do have my Instapot going with the rice. I was going back and forth. I have instant rice, the microwave packages. I also have a box of instant brown rice in there. And I was going back and forth going, I'm really tired tonight. And I went, nah, my Instapot makes less work of it anyways. The only thing is, is I hate cleaning it, but the rice is so much better in the Instapot. So we're just going to give this a few more minutes and we will come back with the chicken. So I've cooked the veggies down. Now we're going to add the chicken back in. 
Get it good and mixed. We're going to give this sauce another stir. Make sure that cornstarch on the bottom doesn't stick. And I hear my Instapot, so our rice is ready. And we're going to put this all together. And yeah, there's a lot of sauce, but keep in mind, we like it saucy. And a lot of times when I make some of these recipes, there isn't enough. So I would almost rather have extra sauce and kind of ladle it off. I don't think this will be too much. So we're going to let this come up to kind of a boil almost. And this is going to thicken. And we'll get it all put together. Okay. That was definitely a double sauce because, I mean, there's sauce in there. But this isn't overly saucy. I think this is probably the right amount. So I say double the sauce on this one. So I've got the rice, and as always, I'm glad I went with the Instapot. It makes the nicest rice. And we're just going to put this on top. some veggies. There we go. See, and really, this is not too much sauce. It's not soaked. So I definitely say double the sauce. And that's dinner tonight. Thanks for joining me.